Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and it's time for our live video chat. If you notice, we have a new name. We're going to be calling our live video chat Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. I talked to all of you last week about changing our name, and I wanted it to be something that both my friends on Facebook and my friends on YouTube would understand that it's for both of you because I have lots of wonderful friends on Facebook and I have lots of wonderful friends on YouTube. And by changing the name to Coffee and Crochet with Sarah, it doesn't sound like it's live when it goes to YouTube. The video will still be live on Facebook every week 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time on the Posh Pooch Designs page, but when I send it over to YouTube, it won't be so confusing. And so the new name is Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. Now, don't be offended if you don't drink coffee. If you'd rather have a glass of Dr. Pepper or maybe a glass of iced tea or even hot tea or just maybe a glass of wine, it doesn't matter to me. It's just, we always clink in, clink, and I've got my coffee time mug today because that's the same picture that I used for the opening picture. I see a lot of you have already clinked in here. Let's see. I see Tammy and Alicia and Karst, such a pretty name. Brenda, Tammy, Tina, Dawn, Tal Talana. That's pretty too, Jennifer, Rita, Carol, Karen, Amberly, Vivian, Dawn. There's Tina again. Clink, clink, clink. <laughs> Caitlin, Fotini, Samantha, Gail, Susie, Carol, Tracy, Pat, Mary, Susie. So, so good to see all of you here. I love to see some of the returning names that I start to recognize. And I also love to see new names that I don't recognize because that means more people are loving crochet. All right. So if you missed the beginning, um, I know we just started, but just to re reiterate or emphasize, the video is no longer going to be called Live with Sarah. It's going to be called Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. I was going to call it Coffee and Crochet with Friends, but I wanted my name in there somewhere, and I got lots of suggestions, and lots of great suggestions, as a matter of fact. All righty, are we ready to get started? All right, now, if you haven't clinked in yet, let's go ahead and clink in. Clinkity clink. <laughs> and like I said, you don't have to drink coffee. Drink whatever you want. <laughs> All right, now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, let me change this paper, and I'm going to click back down. March is National Crochet Month. That means in the month of March, we're going to have a big giveaway. I've already got some fun stuff coming in. My goal is to have $100 worth of, worth of things to give away and one big giveaway. And when I say things, I mean, I've got um, people that have donated crochet hook, um, um, scissors, uh, stitch markers, and some other things, along with some fun yarns as well. And so what we're going to do is the Tuesday, that is the Tuesday after St. Patrick's Day, and I don't have that exact date, but it's I think it's three weeks from today, but I'll check again. But I'm going to have it all ready to go by next week, because next week it will be the first Tuesday in March, and then I'll show you the big giveaway, and I'm not going to show you everything in it. I'm just going to show you the package of it, and I'm really excited. I've got it sitting over there with some things, and I'm waiting on some other things to come in, and I'm real excited about it because March is National Crochet Month through the Crochet Guild of America, and I want everyone to love to crochet, and so this is our month. This is our time to let everybody know that crochet isn't just for old grannies, even though I am an old granny. <laughs> I started when I wasn't. <laughs> and so anybody of any age can learn to crochet because 
crochet is what I always say an ever growing art so I want you to tune in next week and I want you to get excited about that big giveaway and I'll explain to you how you can get in to win what to win it I can get into the to the um to uh, get your name in to win and then I'll also explain to you all the ins and outs and all of that stuff next week but I wanted you to understand that it's coming and it's big <laughs> Alrighty, now I get lots and lots of questions about yarn weights. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how to substitute yarn weights. We're not going to talk about um, the uh, con content of the yarn, like whether it's wool or, or the fiber of it, if it's alpaca, if it's acrylic or cotton. We're not going to be uh, really talking about that. We're going to talk about the yarn weights. Now I have written out on a piece of paper here, not written out, typed out. <laughs> you don't want me to write it out. <laughs> All right, let's click over to the camera again and I'm going to bring this down right there. And um, this is your basic yarn weights if you want this just it'll be on the blog that i'll post when we're all done you know i always do a blog along with our video and um today's video we're talking about substituting yarns based on yarn weight and you can see there are seven different yarn weights and i believe there's actually an eighth one now for those super jumbos and so you've got your lace weight which is your tiny you've got fingering sport um dk weight usually goes in with the number two uh weight you've got a light which is a three a medium or worsted weight which is a four you got your chunky or bulky at five your super bulky at six jumbo at seven now let's say you're working on a pattern and the pattern calls for maybe a worsted weight four well all you have is a three will it work and one thing to keep in mind is you can anytime change your yarn weight just remember it's going to change the size and you'll need to change your crochet hook but let's let me move this up and I'm going to show you just to here if you use two strands held together of a zero you're going to get a one and that's your lace weight from up here if you hold two strands of your fingering weight held together, you're going to get mm, roughly a two or a three. And we put those together because remember there's wiggle room within those weights. And I'm going to show you some yarns in just a second to give you an idea of that. Um, if you hold two or three strands of number two weight, you're going to get a four. And again, you can see we've put those together because it varies within those categories. If you hold four of two strands of number four weight, you're going to get about a five. If you hold two strands of five, you're going to get about a six. And these, of course, are estimates because all yarns are different. And then I also added this, and this is something that just has to do with three. If you hold three strands, you'll get it to a two or three. Three strands of a number one, you'll get about a four. Three strands of a two or three, you'll get about a five. And four strands of a three, you'll get about a six. And this is all on the blog. You can go and look at that. But what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna bring in some yarns. And the reason I'm doing this is just to give you a comparison. This is a bulky number six, all right? Now, if I take this this is a number three weight but check this out this is our super um sorry not super saver um karen simply soft and it's considered a four it looks more like a three right but if i take another one here this is red heart super saver and it's considered a four and see within those measurements there's wiggle room and the way it's set up is it has to do with wraps per inch. They get a ruler, and I have done a video on this, and you can go and find that. There's a blog and a video. It's, it's called WPI, wraps per inch. And they wrap it around the ruler until it reaches a certain inch, and then it tells you what category it goes into. All right, so here I have 
a number five and here I have a number six. Well, let's say the pattern calls for a number five, but all I have is a six. Can I use that? You can. Like I said, you can use any weight yarn for any weight pattern. Just remember, you're gonna to have to change your hook and it's not going to be the same size, all right? Now, a lot of times, something that I really like to do, oh, I just put my yarn in my coffee. <laughs> Guess I'll be washing this tablecloth and this yarn. <laughs> but one of the things I like to do is here is a number three weight yarn. Okay. And I really like the color of it. All right. But I want to work a pattern that calls for a worsted weight number four. So I'll use this and I'll hold the strands together and stitch with those strands together. Now it may not work exactly the same. I need to measure as I go. And you know I always say that. Keep your tape measure handy and measure as you go. Um, another thing, like I was saying with the number five and the number six, if you have a pattern that calls for one or the other and you want to substitute back and forth, you can. But just remember to measure as you go. Now, one of the things that we did this last week, let me move all this yarn out of the way cover up my coffee stain. I can't believe I did that. Drop the edge of my coffee or the edge of my yarn right in my coffee. <laughs> and the reason that I wanted to talk about yarn weights and it's, it can be kind of confusing, but don't let it confuse you. All right. Um, behind me is this blanket that we worked on this week. And this is my Scrapalicious granny blanket. We did it in a rectangle and I used three strands of yarn. And someone asked me, well, can I just make it out of a bulky yarn? And you certainly can. Oops, it's falling off my chair. I'll just set it down there. But anyway, you certainly can. And because three strands of worsted weight are about the same thickness as a number six chunky or super bulky yarn. I always say chunky when I mean bulky for some reason. So anyway, this is something that a lot of people ask about all the time and get really confused and it's one of those things that it has to do with how creative you want to be or how much of a challenge maybe you want to give yourself because you can always 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 substitute yarns and it's amazing a lot of people think that they have to use the same color yarn the same brand of yarn that maybe the designer used for that pattern and you don't have to okay for instance let's say i took this bulky yarn i love this yarn it's the burnett uh, chunky i've made a lot of different things out of it and i love it okay but you don't have any of this but you want to try that pattern okay so what you do is you just grab what you have and you try it out Okay, so a bulky number six equals three, uh, whoops, I hit my camera, <laughs> three of the worsted weight number fours, or you can do simply soft, use three together, or any of your other yarns. And maybe you don't want it as thick. Maybe you want that, that cowl or that scarf to be just a little bit lighter. So you go with a lighter yarn. Just remember every skein of yarn skein ball hank whatever you want to call your yarn cake has a suggested crochet hook on the label and you'll find it in those little boxes there'll be one that has knitting and one that has the crochet hook let me get some coffee i think i'm gonna cough <clears throat> okay <clears throat> Now, you don't have to use the crochet hook that goes with that yarn, but it is a good suggestion and a place to start. And they don't just stick those on there for fun. They have tested the yarn and um, seen which crochet hook works best or which set of knitting needles works best. And another thing to remember is everybody crochets differently. I've said this many times, I tend to crochet just a little bit looser. And I, uh, my daughter, Elizabeth of Callie's Clips and Crochet Creations, she tends to crochet a little bit tighter. And something that is totally weird is I crochet loose, but I knit tight. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Who knows why I do that? I don't. 
But keep that in mind, and that's why a lot of times you'll see a gauge, if the gauge is important. Sometimes it's, it doesn't really make a difference because if you measure as you go, you'll know if you're making it. If you're making a hat and it looks really long, measure who you're making it for or estimate and don't make as many rows down or as many rows around. That's where you always keep a tape measure with you. And I, this one's busted on the end. And I just added a piece of yarn because I still need it. I have these everywhere in every yarn bag. I have some downstairs by the, my other computer. I have one up here in my yarn room. I have them in places where I love to sit and crochet. I have a tape measure everywhere. It is your best friend when it comes to crochet and knitting because there's nothing more frustrating than to make something and have it be too big or too small. Don't finish the whole project. Measure as you go. All right. Okay. Let's see if I've got any more questions here. <laughs> Is it Tal Talana? She says she has the same shirt. I love this shirt. I added this little crochet flower to it. It's actually, don't tell anybody, but it's actually a night shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this shirt. <laughs> it fits me like a dress because I'm like 5'2". And so it comes like right down below my knees. <laughs> but I love this shirt. Okay. Hi, Kimberly. She says she's sorry she's late. It's okay. Brenda loves my shirt too. Um, I got it at Walmart over in the jammies. <laughs> okay. All right. Linda says, I really surprised I've had thicker or thinner SS, but never like that. The thing about uh, Karen Simply Soft is if you have some of the older stuff, it is quite a bit thinner because um, I think it was Yarnspirations that bought it out and they've changed the manufacturer. And so it's a little more up to par now, but this is an older one. This is just a remnant um, that I had and I have quite a few because I like Simply Soft and Simply Soft. Oh, there's a piece of yarn floating around. <laughs> Simply Soft is my go to yarn for when I make um, chemo hats. When my mom, uh, before she passed, she passed from breast cancer. Um, it's, it's actually been about five years now. Um, I made her tons of hats and uh, scarves and head covers using Karen Simply Soft because it's a super soft yarn and it washes up nicely and it keeps its shape. So yeah, it's been uh, bought out by um, Yarnspirations, I believe, and they changed manufacturers. But that's where you have to measure as you go. You have to make sure that what you're making is going to fit the person that you're making it for. All right, Susie's talking about variegated. Um, when I'm doing a blanket like this one, I use solid stripes, variegated, whatever yarn I have, and I try to stay within the same weight um, and the same fiber. Like, I don't have any cotton or wool in this. This is all leftovers from worsted weight, medium weight yarns, and some number threes. When I used a number three yarn, I used four strands. And when I used a number four yarn, I used three strands. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I stayed within the fiber content. When I'm doing a blanket, um, I'd stay within the fiber content of that whole blanket. Okay. And I don't care if they're, because all the colors are going to be meshed together. So I don't really care. But if I'm making something like say a scarf and I'm using say two strands of Karen, uh, like one of these cakes that's variegated, I'll try to line those up. They don't always get perfect because these are dyed and done by, by machines. And so you could be off just a tiny, tiny bit sometimes, but I don't mind. I, I, I like the, uh, the randomness of how the colors fall on the Karen cakes. A lot of people don't care for that, but I do. I love it. And that's probably because I'm more of an artist than I am, you know, technical. Okay. What's my daughter's channel? My daughter is Callie's Clips and Crochet Creations. She does a lot of baby props. Um, she's on Ravelry. She hasn't been on YouTube lately, 
but she's on Ravelry. She um, she gave away a pattern in our gave, giveaway last week. She has a blog. She's got a lot of free stuff, uh, free patterns. She's also on Etsy. Um, <clears throat> she actually is the one that helps me with a lot of my technical stuff along with my husband. Like if I get a notice about something on the blog or something, the first thing I do is email her and she tells me what to do. <laughs> because like I said, I'm more of the artist and she's more of the technical. She is just like her dad. That's why the two of them help me so much. All right, let's see if there's any other questions. Let's see. Oh, how does my daughter spell her name? It's C-A-L-L-E-I-G-H, Callie, Crochet, and uh, Callie's Clips and Crochet Creations. Remember um, last year in, I think it was last year in June, my granddaughter was here. That's her daughter, Callie. A lot of people call her Kelly, but it's actually Callie. Um, and that's that's who she named her stuff after. And she's been doing this since when she was pregnant with Callie. So, um, and Callie is going to be nine this year. So she's been doing it a long time. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Callie, C-A-L-L-E-I-G-H, Callie's Clips Crochet and Creations. Um, if you go to my blog... There's a little square on the side that ha where you can just click on that and it'll take you right to her stuff. I just added that so people could find it. All right, let me see if there's any other questions. Then we're going to talk about some other um, crochet patterns. All right, the blanket that I that I have here. This is just my it, just my scrap ta scrapalicious blanket. It's a pattern we put out last week. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> hopefully they're delivering yarn someone just left me a box on the front porch but anyway um that blanket is f is just a pattern we put out it's the scrapalicious granny blanket it's a rectangle blanket and you can find that on the blog and also on youtube okay so let's see if there's any other questions you know, Brenda says variegated always seems to be thinner. I think it is. I, it does seem like it is. And I think it has to do with the amount of dye that's in it. it and it takes the time to dye it. And the more agitation, especially with acrylic. Now, wool, if you agitate it more, it turns felted. But with the acrylic, it takes more dyes, more times dyed. And, and as it's agitated, I think it stretches it out a little bit. I think you're right on that one. All right, let's see what else we've got here. I don't know what you mean. You're short on measurements. Um, what I did on the measurements is I just did the most popular ones. I, unless you're talking about the number eight. The number eight is a new one. And that's the super jumbo. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Karen. Um, let's see. Okay, Carol says, if price were not a factor, which would you prefer to use, acrylic or natural fibers? I really, myself, do not care for a lot of the natural fibers because they're so rough. And I don't mind using the wool blends, but wool on its own, to me, is extremely rough. Unless you get the Lamb's Pride or some that have been um, processed just a little bit different. But I, I personally, I really prefer both cotton and acrylic yarns. And I've bought, in, I went to Alaska um, on a cruise a couple years ago, and I brought back a bunch of gorgeous yarn, and it's bison yarn. It's a bison that they get, um, she was explaining to me how they do it, and they brush the belly of the bison and make the yarn out of it. And it's like $100 for a ball of it, and I did bring back one or two of those. And it's extremely, extremely soft. And there, are, and, but when it comes to preference, I like either a wool blend, or I, that's blended with cotton or with acrylic. I do not care for a lot of the natural fibers, partly because they don't hold up well, and I like things that are going to stay put. But you also have to take good care of it. I mean, people who just toss their stuff in the washer and dryer and don't take extra care, yes, it says you can, but I want my stuff to last as long as it can um, and take care of it as well. In other words... Yes, I can throw that blanket in the washer and the dryer, but
but I would rather put it in the wash machine on gentle with just a tiny bit of soap and a little bit of so a fabric softener. And I also add just a couple, like maybe a tablespoon of distilled white vinegar. And then I don't throw, after it's done on washing on gentle, I don't put it in the dryer. I have, I lay my blankets out on the, over the railing on my back deck. And then a lot of the smaller items I'll lay on top of my dryer because my, my laundry room is warm from the dryer running. And so I might do a load of laundry, a load of towels or something, and just set those things on top. Now, cotton fiber, it, uh, things are going to soften up also with that little tiny bit of white vinegar. I don't know what it is about the distilled white vinegar, but it softens acrylic and it softens your cotton. And it also makes your cotton more absorbent. If you make a lot of dish towels and dishcloths with the cotton, sometimes they don't get, sometimes they don't, uh, they lose their absorbency. And if you, every now and then, it's even good with your towels. What's Maximo doing? Are you peeking? <laughs> So anyway, um, sometimes they lose their absorbency, even your towels. And if you add just a little bit of white vinegar, the distilled white vinegar, um, in your wash machine, it's like I said, just a tablespoon or two, it will cause your towels and anything that's made out of cotton to become more absorbent, all right, and softer as well. All right, let's see if there's any other questions. Let's see. All right, um, Cassie wants me to explain different fibers. I'm not going to talk about that today. I do have a video that I did that talks about all the different fibers and how to determine which fiber is which. And um, you can look for that up in my YouTube playlist, and you can find that one on fibers. I did do, Actually, I did two different ones. One's just on different fibers, and one's on how to determine what the fiber is. That, like, for instance, you got something or someone gave it to you and it doesn't have a wrapper. Okay. All right, Karen says, if your project measures five and you're calling for a six, can you use out a row to make it as a six? And that can work, but it depends on what you're making. If you're making something where you have to have the exact measurements and you're going around, you need to make sure you have the right amount of stitches to make sure or the right amount of rows for that particular pattern. If you're just doing a blanket um, and you want to leave out a, a pad, or leave out a row or something, that's kind of up to you. A lot of times, like even with our uh, grandtastic crochet along that we're doing, where we're doing squares each month, if your square is a little over or under by a half of an inch, it's not really going to make a difference. That just has to do with tension. And another thing that you can do is if you're coming out too big is use a smaller crochet hook and tighten up your tension. Okay. All right. I think Karen means if your working WIP measurement is off, can you just add an extra row to make up for that? You can. Um, again, like I said, just, just depends on what pattern that you're working on. If you have a question about that, Always contact the designer of the pattern and they can help you with that and tell you if it does make a difference, okay? A lot of times it doesn't. If you're making a blanket or you're making a wrap or a scarf that doesn't really matter if it's off of just a smidge, that's not going to matter, all right? A lot of times it has to do with uh, whether you're a technical or, or an artistic crocheter because people who are more technical want everything to line up nice and tightly. And, but if you're artistic, lean towards the artistic like I do, my husband calls me artsy fartsy. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't mind if it's off by like a half of an inch or something like that. It just kind of depends on how you feel about it and if you want to adjust that. And always, if you have a question like that, um, contact the designer that wrote the pattern and they'll help you through it, okay? Yeah, Kimberly says she never puts them in the dryer. I don't either. Unless it's cotton, I don't. All right, she's also asking about the babies, and that's Max and Rosie. They're over there. You heard them bark earlier. They're doing great. Max is still struggling a little bit with some sinus, but who isn't right now with all the crazy weather, right? And so he's doing pretty good. He, sometimes he keeps me up because he wakes me up. You know, he, he um, starts that snorting and stuff at night. 
All right, let's talk about the new projects. And of course, one of the new projects is this blanket that we did this week. You can see it's a rectangle. And it's just a really neat way to get rid of all your scraps of yarn. The only thing I really suggest is to stay within the same weight. The other thing that we did this week was we did the scrubbies. And I told you about that new scrubby yarn at Hobby Lobby. So we made these scrubbies. The, and someone said, I don't think those would work very good. Let me tell you, they are fantastic. I have some pans that are supposed to be nonstick. They're not. They're sticky. <laughs> and, of course, we eat a lot of eggs. And so I use these to scrub those pans out. They don't scratch up my pans, but they get the yuck out. So great scrubbies. We did this pattern and video this last week. I think it was on Friday. Just And I put in there also a, just a little bit of a review on the yarn. So you can get a kind of understanding of what the yarn feels like and looks like and what to look for. And someone asked me, because this, this yarn I've only seen at Hobby Lobby. And someone asked me, do I know the schedule for the Hobby Lobby sales? And usually they're every two weeks. But if there's a month where there's three weeks, there'll be three weeks in between. And so what you can do is you can either... Uh, get the Hobby Lobby app on your phone, or you can go to their Facebook, or you can go to their website. They always put their sale flyer on the app, on their Facebook page, and on their uh, website. You can go there and look and see what's on sale. I have it on my phone because I use the coupons every time I go, and so... I can go in and look, okay, they had the 30% off, and I take my list because I go in and I stock up on things like the black yarn, the white yarn, beige yarns, blue yarns that you use all the time. I'll stock up on those, and then I'll walk through and see, hmm, and that's when I found that other yarn. So use your 30% off all the time, and they almost always have a 40% off one item. And if there's a yarn that you've been wanting to try, but it's a little too expensive. You can use that 40% off and get even more off on that. All right. Um, another question people ask me is, can you use Hobby Lobby and um, Michael's coupons at Joann's? And the truth is, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. It depends on the cashier and the Joann's. It's different at every store you go to. Hobby Lobby does not accept other store coupons, and my Michaels does not accept other store coupons, and that's just in my town. And you need to ask your, because they're all run differently, the manager has a choice to do it however they want to do it, and so just ask, all right? The other thing we did was yesterday, I uh, put out my first St. Patrick's Day pattern for the year. And that is the shamrock or the four leaf clover. And here's one done in cotton. And then the rainbow. Isn't that adorable? I love this rainbow one. Okay, so now just a word of warning. I, um, if you're going to use these for a hot pad, you're going to put something hot right out of the oven or off the stove. Make it out of cotton yarn. Okay. But if it's just for something warm, like maybe, um, you know, a basket of hot biscuits, or you just don't want to scar up your wooden countertop or your, or your table, these are fine, made out of acrylic, okay? And another thing that you can do is you can make two, you can put them together, and then do the trim, and then it's double thick. And then it's even more uh, thick and also helps keep things from getting scratched up, okay? They're super easy to make. They don't take hardly any yarn. And this yarn here, this one that's like a variegated, it's premier cotton, super soft. This is Red Heart. I've got the skein right here, Red Heart Stripes. I believe this one's called Bright Stripes, yes. And it ended up where there wasn't any black on it, and I kind of like that because this has a little bit of a black going through it, which is fine. But I wanted it to be rainbow because to me... St. Patrick's Day and rainbows go together because, you know, the gold's a pot of gold's at the end of the rainbow, right? So you got to have a rainbow one. And then, of course, these two are just Red Heart Super Savers. So that's, that's backwards. <laughs> All right. They measure about eight by eight. I did notice that the cotton one came out about seven and a half. And that just the Premier Cotton Super Soft. So you can use worsted weight number four 
or you can use a cotton that's a medium for to make those. All right, so we did those yesterday. Now, I have a lot of fun stuff coming up because I have some more St. Patrick's Day stuff. And one of, the, one of my friends said, you know, I don't really celebrate the holidays that much, but I like making a lot of the things that you do. And so, you know, a lot of them, um, uh, even though I've got like St. Patrick's Day colors, you don't have to make them according to the holiday. For instance, this particular one right here, if you leave off the stem, it looks like a flower. I mean, look at this. Does that look like a flower? So, you can change them up. And I've got, um, we've got a couple of patterns that we're going to be redoing. I'm going to redo the series on the bucket hats. Um, <clears throat> and we're adding more sizes so that the child's hat has three sizes instead of just one. I got my friend testing that one right now, making sure those add up. And, um... We're going to be redoing the video on the ladies' bucket hat and the opal bucket hat. We're going to be redoing those videos, updating those patterns. And I, I like to do them, you know, because I like to make sure the pattern works well. But also, like I said before, sometimes the yarns change and we get new colors and new styles. And I want people to see that they don't have to stick with the colors that those things were originally made in. You can use your imagination and come up with some new and different colors and it's also a lot of fun just to see how things are going to turn out when i did the video for this one i i told people i said i don't know how this is going to look let's just try it out and see and i love it because it's lighter it's cotton and i'm actually going to use this one i think as as a washcloth in my guest bathroom because i think it's just fun i was going to use it as a doily but it turned out just a smidge smaller than i thought it was going to all right, so that's what we did this week. We got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And don't forget, next week, we're going to talk about the big March giveaway for National Crochet Month. <laughs> I'm trying to ease you in there. And if you didn't hear at the beginning of the video, this is no longer live with Sarah. It's now coffee and crochet with Sarah. That way, when it goes over to YouTube, it doesn't sound like it's live on YouTube. It's been a little confusing, even though just the name of it was live with Sarah. And so that's why I've got my coffee shirt on. And I want to just thank you all for being with me today. I know I talked a lot. And just to just to reiterate, I do have videos on wraps per inch. I do have videos on fiber. You can go to the playlist on YouTube and hit live videos. And you can just look through there and it'll tell you, um, you know, which ones are which. Or you can just search. If you go to YouTube at the top, there's a little search box. And you can put in live with Sarah or Sarah Satch, word, you know, wraps per inch or Sarah Satch yarn fiber. And it'll come up. Okay, the other place you can look for those is, of course, on my blog. And um, <clears throat> I'm getting dry again because I'm talking too much. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to let you go. I hope I answered most of your questions. And um, like I always say, thank you for being a part of my live videos of Posh Pooch Designs because I couldn't do what I love without you. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye now.